What's up, you two? Welcome to our channel. I am Jay from L214. And today's video, we'll be talking about hypertrophy. We'll be covering the definition of hypertrophy, different types of hypertrophies. That's right, there's more than one. Hypertrophy training tips and much more. Let's get started. So aside from simply exercising and working out for health reasons, when we work out, it's usually targeted towards these reasons, increase in strength, muscle size, cardiovascular capacities, and for specific movements towards functional uses such as sports, posture, and flexibility. In today's video, we'll be digging into bodybuilding's core objective, which is increase in muscle size, also known as in physiology term hypertrophy. The definition of hypertrophy refers to the growth or enlargement of an organ or tissue due to the increase in size of its cells. When we typically talk about hypertrophy at gyms or when we're working out, it's skeletal muscle hypertrophy, which is triggered through forcing the muscles work against resistance, inducing stress reaction, and thus adapting to that stress by increasing in size or in cell counts. This process is different than in training to just increase one's strength. While without hypertrophy, you and your muscles technically can get stronger, and while muscles may still get stronger through hypertrophy, just because you're getting stronger, that does not necessarily mean that your training and workouts are optimized for hypertrophic objective. To understand hypertrophy in a more complex sense, there are two types of skeletal muscle hypertrophy. One is called myofibrillar hypertrophy and the other is called sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. For myofibrillar hypertrophy, think of power lifters or world's strongest man. Myofibrillar hypertrophy involves an increase in the number of protein filament bundles known as myofibrils, which help the muscle to be able to contract, stretch, or relax. Increasing numbers of myofibrils results in muscular strength and with myofibrillar hypertrophy, the muscle becomes denser over time. When training for myofibrillar hypertrophy, you're slightly damaging the muscles by uh, putting them under extreme stress, causing them to adapt to larger loads, meaning weights. Uh, they then become more functionally strong and slightly larger in size due to an increase in cells recruited. As for sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, this is where the volume of fluid within the muscle increases. The best example of sarcoplasmic hypertrophy would be the pump when you, you get when you lift weights. Also, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy is what bodybuilders and most of those who want to look fit and muscular tend to focus more when maximizing overall size and shapes of muscles. Sarcoplasm is actually the fluid and energy resources surrounding the myofibrils in your muscles, which contains ATP, glycogen, creatine, and water. And sarcoplasmic hypertrophy occurs when the volume of sarcoplasmic fluid in your muscle cells increase. Uh, by the way, this is why hydration and water retention rate are so important when actively working out, as well as why there is a cell fluid level indicator in in-body scan or body composition scan results. With sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, the muscles are objecting to endure and persevere with less time needed for maximum strength and speed under stress, meaning resistance. Uh, this process would add to muscle volume, but not growth in muscle fibers. Basically, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy is a kind of an artificial muscle growth, and it is one of the main reasons why your muscles start to lose in size when you stop training for a long time or become sedentary and muscles are not getting sufficient work against enough resistance. Although the fitness goal is different for everyone, for the regular population who are lifting weights at the gym, a bigger and more shapely muscles can create more appealing results in one's physique. And this is particularly true for bodybuilders or those who are training for bodybuilding, where muscle size is valued over muscle strength or functions. Aside from just sheer aesthetic benefits, muscles are heavier than body fat and thus muscles burn more calories than fat. Bigger muscles equal a higher amount of calories burned throughout the day. Uh, think of muscles as a storage for energy or the food you eat, 
And this is why people must lift weights to trigger hypertrophy so you, that you don't suffer from yo-yo effect. That often occurs when one simply drops a body weight, which almost always by sacrificing muscle tissues to do so. Therefore, hypertrophy benefits people who are trying to lose body weight by turning their body into more effective fat burning machines. Plus, we typically lose muscles as we age, and this is referred to as muscle atrophy or sarcopenic effect. One way to combat this is by increasing muscle size through regular resistance training program. One's ability to trigger hypertrophy and thus increase the size of their muscles is impacted by a number of reasons, where genetics play a most important role. Genetics given at birth will dictate how fast one can achieve muscle growth and how much one will be able to develop muscle size and shape. Another factor is one's ratio between type 1 and type 2 muscle fibers. Type 1 fibers are often associated with endurance, whereas type 2 fibers are associated with strength and size. So someone with more type 2 fibers is commonly believed to have an easier time increasing the size of their skeletal muscles. Another muscle growth potential which often gets overlooked is one's musculoskeletal foundation. For example, the shorter the tendons, like the limbs, and thicker the bone density, the greater the ability to increase muscle size. According to an article in Science Daily, it says that tendon length is practically the discerning factor where muscle size and potential muscle size are concerned. And I know for some of you, looking at these factors can leave you feeling somewhat disappointed. Believe me, I was like you too. I wasn't born with the greatest genetics and you cannot, after all, alter your genetics, musculoskeletal makeup, or what muscle type fibers ratio you have. But don't feel too defeated just yet. The most important factor that you do have control over that you can improve the size of your muscle mass is your workout protocol and intensity. That's why it is so important to recognize that strength training and hypertrophy training are not the same. There are factors that differ when your goal is to increase muscle strength or size. One factor is the recommended load, meaning weights used, which impacts the number of repetitions that you can do before reaching failure. As for the load, if the goal is to get stronger, the load should be greater than 85% of one rep max. And if muscle hypertrophy is the main goal, the load could be a little bit lower, somewhere between 65 to 85% of one rep max. When you train for sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, your workouts should be in high volume with relatively short rest periods in between sets at around 60 seconds, sometimes maybe even up to 90 seconds if you're at the high end of the low volume. Ideal reps should remain within the eight to 15 range with three to five sets per exercise. Additionally, when you're targeting for sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, your overall training are not too strenuous on your central nervous system. And since your muscles can recover quickly than your CNS, Given that your nutrition and recovery are on point, the ideal training frequency is to train each muscle group at least twice per week. This is why I recommend two-day split like upper and lower or three-day split like PPL, push, pull, leg, split. When training for myofibrillar hypertrophy, you'll be focusing mainly on strength. This means your rep ranges will be around one to five, ideally three for safety reasons, unless you have strong spotters, and rest time from three minutes up to even five minutes. You'll be doing mostly big lifts, such as deadlifts, squats, overhead press, bench press, and rows, and your number of sets per exercise will be in the higher range than sarcoplasmic training at around five to 10 sets per exercise. Now, unless you want to focus on solely one side of hypertrophy for some reason, although I don't see why anyone would do that, uh, it makes total sense to take a hybrid approach to your training if you wish to be both strong and aesthetic. This is why I always preach about progressive overload throughout your workout journey and also within your day-to-day -day training. Meaning, and this is how I usually lead my client sessions, let's say you're doing four sets for each exercise, I'll be increasing weights each and every set and lowering the number of reps accordingly. Now, this is a sure and easy way of covering both strength and hypertrophy training. 
Well, that's it for today on Hypertrophy 101. I hope that it can help you design the workouts in a little more detailed way. It's always better to know why you're doing certain reps and using certain weights instead of just training blindly. Please subscribe and hit the like button if you found this video helpful. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.